Such a wonderful day at the farm, a day filled with sunshine and charm. Isn't it nice? So happy and nice. Come walk with me and you'll agree, not a nicer day you'll ever see. Isn't it nice? So happy and nice. You've always wanted to visit a place like this, and I've always wanted to meet someone like you. So now that you're here, why don't we relax? Pull off your shoes, sit in a chair. Isn't it nice? So happy and nice. And hey, there's nothing nicer than sharing fresh baked cookies with your friends. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Alan Smith and welcome to the show. You know, the world is full of so much negativity. I take the approach that you have to look for the positive in everything. Fred Rogers once said, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, Fred, look for helpers. You'll always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words and I'm always comforted by realizing that there's still so many helpers, so many caring people in this world. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm inclined to agree. There's so many people out there trying to make the world a better place, and that's what we're gonna focus on in this show. And many of them, I think they'd make Mr. Rogers very proud. See, I was uh, in the Navy from uh, 2004 to 2011. I'm a current member of the Arkansas Army National Guard. I spent 13 years in the military. If I hadn't been injured, I'd, I'd have probably, re you know, fully retired from the military. I'd plan on spending all my life in the military. Started here two years ago, and it's been uh, life-changing for me. EcoVet was started in 2011 um, by a father and son team that wanted to give veterans an opportunity to re-enter the workforce and now my dad, Mike Haygood, run, owns it. And we take semi-trailers that Walmart has decommissioned and we take them, we tear them down, we use all the wood and metal to make furniture. It's amazing, like there's not people like that at all like um, being able, willing to take the money out of their own pocket because they see other people struggling and you know they may not have served themselves but they see what we're going through at home people not wanting to give us the opportunity because I mean after some people find out we've deployed they think we're crazy like we're not we're just you know our switches are a little bit different now. Veterans have done a great service for our country. For those that are not veterans, unlike myself and my dad, we feel like we owe it to them. They've put their life on the line and and it's hard for them to come back and enter into civilian world. Sometimes getting a job isn't easy because their credentials from military don't transfer into civilian life very easily. Without programs like this, some of us never find our path again. Like they'll just, just stumble around being, you know, an outcast of society. And this is, you know, this is kind of putting us all back together. So we're able to find ourselves, we're able to function in society again. With, with the military, it's a, it's a whole nother world. And you get out and you don't find many places that you fit. You know, I happen to find EcoVet and I fit. And then we have some veterans that just want a place where it's safe, where they don't feel like they have to tell their stories, they don't have to talk about it, and they can just come and do their work and do something and be proud of it, just as they were their time in the service. But at the end of the day, when you see the finished product, after ripping it out of the trailer, there's a sense of pride in, in the work. It's not just reclaiming something that normally would have went you know, to the trash, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like a lot of us old school military guys, you know, they're, instead of just being forgotten about and pushed aside, you know, we're, we're giving it another chance and revamping it into something else. And it's kind of like us, you know, revamping us into civilian life, so to speak, you know, so. Because you can look at our guys and they come back and don't have anywhere to go. These trailers get decommissioned, don't have anywhere to go. And so we're putting the two things together and it, and it works. Still to come, a downtown revival and the birth of a creative corridor. But up next, we'll check in with our friends at The One Inc. who are growing for a cause. There's more garden style straight ahead. For many years, Aaron Redden of The One Inc. 
has fought for one of society's most vulnerable groups, the homeless. When we first met, all Aaron had was a van, a plot of land, and a chicken house. But now he's expanded the field into so much more. Uh, the one is uh, a small grassroots nonprofit focused on uh, the unsheltered homeless of Arkansas. One component of that is the field. Uh, early on in getting out there and, and identifying needs, one of the needs that we found was that it was fresh foods. We said, let's, let's just start a little garden and uh, see what we can do with it. We had no idea that it was gonna one day be this, you know, this big with chickens and bees and, and all of the components that the field has. Uh, um, but we're, we're pumped that it's it's taken off like it has for sure. A lot of times when we're working out here, we'll have housed people, unhoused people, recently rehoused people, maybe future homeless people. I mean, it's it's everyone, and uh, I think that's a lot of the beauty of the field is it's it's a genuine community of, of all of us. We all help each other, you know, and it it feels good being out here to be a part of something like this. It's amazing to watch, you know, the growth and the evolution of the field, uh, but also be able to watch how the, the growth that that brings into someone else's life. Roger specifically, you know, he, he gets so excited when he gets to take something that he's grown to his peers that still live out there. I was one of the camps, you know, and I firsthand know what it means when he pulls up. From where I come from, I, I see both sides of it. I'm not out there anymore. And that was through the one. I try to remind people all the time that you, these people are your neighbors, whether they have walls or not. After the break, inspiring future generations to lend a helping hand one heifer at a time. Stay tuned. Heifer International is one of those organizations that's well known for making a positive impact in much needed areas of the world. At the International Headquarters in Little Rock, they've taken that mission a step further in hopes of inspiring others to lend a helping hand. So when people ask me about what Heifer Ranch is, I say it is an amazing place to come and really take a tour around the world. Uh, we are a learning center that helps people in this country primarily learn what life is like for our neighbors around the world. We have the benefits of having a global village that there's houses that are from all over and people can see and really be a part of another part of the world. Uh, we practice experiential education so that the people that come here, uh, they don't just see it, but they get to, to, you know, to walk a mile in the shoes of our, of our world neighbors and hopefully gain a better appreciation for what their lives are like. A majority of our participants are high school kids or young adults and children, and they're just blown away that, you know, this is somebody's reality. This is somebody's reality around the world. And the main thing that we really want our uh, participants to get is the fact that life is different for people in the world. People may live in a home where they physically have a lot less than we do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not happy with their lives, as long as they have their basic needs met and Heifer helps them to, to meet their basic, basic needs and achieve a little bit of security in their lives. And uh, that's the ultimate goal. By helping people that come to the ranch understand that, then hopefully they're a little more inclined to help us achieve our goals also. People should come and, come and volunteer here because you get to be around a melting pot of, of volunteers. You get volunteers from all different states, all different upbringings, and you also can be around volunteers from around the world. The world can be a win-win situation where everybody has enough. And one of the questions that we ask uh, when we are doing our educational programs is exactly that. If, if, if there's enough for all, why don't all have enough? I see a lot of what we do here 
is not so much giving the answers to the questions, but helping people know that there are questions to be asked because uh, the next generation coming up, they're gonna be the ones that have the, the skills to, to, ch to make these things right, to change the world in such a way that, that it can be a win-win situation for everybody on this planet. Coming up, a downtown revitalization driven by the arts. Stay tuned. Today, Little Rock is a city where old mixes with the new in surprising ways. In the creative corridor, economic and community growth is being stimulated by the arts rather than what was once a traditional retail base. Here, the city is developing unique relationships with developers and nonprofits to subsidize the consolidation of scattered art groups. One of the more interesting and ecologically friendly aspects of this project is the way in which they've transformed the streetscape. This new and creative approach to streetscapes is not only good for folks that hang around downtown, it's also good for the environment. Absolutely, and it's really interesting to see and to think about this. So all of the water that comes off the roadways and from all the vehicles driving, that all ultimately winds yeah, up in the Arkansas River. That's a lot of water when we get some of these rains that we, it, we had. It yeah. really is. So, so they added different layers and really created a filtration, a natural filtration system to clean that water before it all winds up back in the Arkansas yeah. River. Yeah. I'm just really excited by what I see here. A great energy is really shaping up yeah. um, for our Main Street and our Creative Corridor. Next, we're getting smart and creative with water conservation. Stay tuned. Water is one of our most precious resources. Water is essential. So we're all looking for ways to conserve water, to reuse water and we're doing it in creative ways. For instance, here underneath this lawn, we have a 6,000 gallon cistern that contains water that we collect or harvest off of these buildings. There are people doing some very creative things in the conservation of water. Let's take a look at a few of them. Drain Smart, the idea for it actually uh, came out of the work that we do on Fush Creek here at Audubon. We uh, have been active in the Fush Creek watershed for uh, almost 20 years, um, trying to protect and restore that vital habitat here in central Arkansas. We're trying to think of ways where we could educate the public on the front end about what happens to trash that's dropped on the side of the street. We set out, found some partners here, and decided to launch Drain Smart as a combination art and conservation project here in Central Arkansas. With our selection of artists, we try to spread it, uh, spread an open call for artists publicly, far and wide, to get as diverse a group of artists to apply as possible. Well, one thing we definitely look for is the conservation message. Is it something that's going to catch someone's eye and be able to convey a message about conservation, about reducing litter flow into our storm drains? And then, and then too, it's just artistic, you know, style. Like, does it appeal to the eye? Does it fit the neighborhood where we're trying to, to place it? And we take all of those things into consideration when we, when we do a selection. The city, our partner uh, with Public Works, actually goes around uh, and, and Parks and Recreation, and they power wash, they clean all the drains completely right before the artists begin painting. Uh, and then we provide the artists with an industrial grade sealant to seal the concrete both before and after they paint and industrial grade outdoor uh, paint that's designed to last between five and seven years to actually complete their mural. We provide them with brushes, we provide them with as much as we possibly can to make it as easy on them as possible. Um, I'm a part of Arkansas Arts Council, so I'm really big into the arts community and um, they sent me an email and I read it and I thought this would be great you know I want to give back um, I want to do something bigger than me and I want to make a difference. As a kid I wasn't really sure what the drains were for now I know it's a storm drain now I know that every time it rains it flushes everything so I'm able to give that knowledge to smaller kids. A lot of kids are really 
big onto, oh yes, we recycle. And then I tell them that this is a little different from recycling. When you're walking down the street, you don't expect to see a piece of art at your feet. Uh, and so it makes people stop, look, and then we ask all of our artists to incorporate a conservation message into their painting. Um, and so that's the idea, is to create a program that's a win for the artists because it helps our local artists get exposure. It's a win for the city because it beautifies our city and it's a win for conservationists because it reduces the amount of trash flowing into our waterways. One lady said to me, well, no one's gonna litter. And I immediately pointed to a, a container and she was in awe and then I started telling her when it rains, there's trash being drained right into our own natural things that we call the natural state. And um, it made her think. So once all of the art has been completed, we then have a big art unveiling where we have, we had all of our artists this year, we had 27 artists that completed 18 individual murals. But we had all of those artists come together for a nice reveal party. And we bring in professional lighting, we take professional photos of their finished work and put it on a, on a easels and, and have an art show and let the public come in. It's a free public event. Uh, we let the public come in, meet the artists, learn about the, the designs that were chosen that year, and then learn about the, the larger conservation message behind the art, why we're doing this project in the first place. People are becoming more aware of what their littering is doing. So I, I really think people, it's an aha moment for a lot of people um, when they see it. Want to learn more? Visit pallensmith.com for delicious recipes, garden tips, blog posts, and our online store. As we've seen in today's show, helpers come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. These chickens, for instance, are great recyclers, big helpers, and they bring a lot of amusement to the backyard flock. The main thing is to think positively. Be a helper, and if you can't find any helpers around, then be a role model and show them how to make a positive impact. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Okay, kids, come on. Let's start thinking about laying some more eggs.